reading this morning is from John 18, verse 33 to 37. Jesus before Pilate. Pilate then went back inside the palace, summoned Jesus and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Is that your own idea? Jesus asked. Or did others talk to you about me? Am I a Jew? Pilate replied. It was your people and your chief priests who handed you over to me. What is it you have done? Jesus said, My kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servant, my servants would <coughs> fight to prevent my arrest by the Jews. But now my kingdom is from another place. You are a king then, said Pilate. Jesus answered, You are right to, in saying I am a king. In fact, <coughs> for the reason I was born for this reason I was born and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth everyone on this on the side of truth listens to me this is the word of the Lord the second reading is Psalm 93 it's on page 601 in the church Bibles The Lord reigns, he is robed in majesty. The Lord is robed in majesty and is armed with strength. The world is firmly established, it cannot be moved. Your throne was established long ago, you are from all eternity. The seas have lifted up, O Lord, the seas have lifted up their voice. The seas have lifted up their pounding waves mightier than the thunder of the great, the great waves, mightier than the breakers of the sea. The Lord on high is mighty. Your statutes stand firm. Holiness adorns your house for endless days, O Lord. This is the word of the Lord. I was quite, quite remiss earlier on by not uh, welcoming our speaker, Mike, now. Uh, many of you will know Mike. I've known Mike for many, many years. And it's delightful to see Hannah at the back there, who uh, is his sort of walking stop clock on his time for uh, sermons, which is a lovely idea. Um, but do join me, Mike, and we'll pray for you. I'm glad Hannah's here, because I offered him an alternative of how to get him off after 20 minutes. He may tell you, may not, but it was funny. <laughs> and it wasn't, wasn't going to be carried out. Um, anyway, can we just pray for Mike, and then um, he will bring God's word to us. Father, thank you for this man of God. Thank you that he has prepared your word for us today. We uh, ask that we have receptive ears and hearts that we can be changed through these words, that we can see a new facet of you in our lives. Lord, we just pray that we will take this seriously and that you have given Mike every single thing he needs to impart this to us today. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Brendan. <laughs> I always love coming here because I get such a, a warm well. If I move away, can you hear me? Is that okay? But, um, right, but yes, I always receive a very loving and warm welcome. And um, the two readings which we just heard, I was told by one of the administrators here that I have to choose one of them. Right. So I'm going to read something from C.H. Spurgeon, a quote, and then, I want, I'm, then I'm going to ask you which of the readings do you think it applies to? So this is not me speaking. Well, it's me speaking, but it's, it's C.H. C. H. Spurgeon's words. When I get to heaven, there's thousands upon thousands of people I can't wait to meet, but he's one of them. My soul, search thyself this morning and see whether thou art guilty of double dealing. Thou profess to be a follower of Jesus. Dost thou truly love him? Is thy heart right with God? Art thou of the family of old father honest, 
or art thou a relative of Mr. Byen's? A name to live is of little value if I be indeed dead in trespasses and sins. To have one foot on the land of truth and another on the sea of falsehoods will involve a terrible fall and a total ruin. Christ will be all or nothing. God fills the whole universe, and hence there is no room for another God. If then he reigns in my heart, there will be no space for another reigning power. Do I rest alone on Jesus crucified and live alone for him? Is it my desire to do so? Is my heart set upon so doing? If so, blessed be the mighty grace which has led me to salvation. And if not so, O Lord, pardon my sad offense and unite my heart to fear thy name. Which one do you think it reflects? Great answer. That was a great answer. But in the end, I've chosen to read and think about and talk about which one. I was going to, and then I realized that once I've got this time limit, <laughs> I'll just go on and on and on. Everlasting God. I could speak for hours on that. So I'm going to talk from John 18. In my Bible, I think it's this one that uh, you read as well, I'm an ex-history teacher, and I'm fascinated that Pilate asks three questions. You notice that? I always f feel sorry for Pilate because for me, he asks the right questions. But he didn't have the answer. He didn't have the courage to actually say and think about what Jesus was saying. So what, in fact, was Jesus saying and his answers in the gospels we don't get this dialogue but we get in John so verse 33 oh, I'm conscious of the time Pilate then went back inside the palace summoned Jesus and asked him are you the king of the Jews he then goes inside his palace why why would he do that the verses before it tells us what's happening for me I think he just wanted to find out a little bit more about Jesus in private not in public Jesus says is that your own idea is that your own idea or did others talk to you about me what's Jesus getting to there He's heard what the Jewish authorities have been saying about him. But he's saying to Pilate, is that your idea? Or are you representing other people? I think Jesus was trying to get to Pilate's motive. So what does Pilate say? Am I a Jew? Pilate replied, it was your people and your chief priests who handed you over to me. What is it you have done? I think Pilate probably thought that the Jewish authorities were exaggerating what Jesus had been doing. I think Jesus was trying to get to Pilate and say, well, okay, do you really believe what they're saying or are you not going to start listening to me through this short conversation about who I really am? Jesus said, My kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servants would fight to prevent my arrest by the Jews. But now, my kingdom is from another place. So for me, he's giving Pilate something to think about. Now we know that when Jesus was arrested, what did Peter do? Gets out a sword, doesn't he? 
cuts off someone's ear. Now, if Jesus' kingdom was the same as the kingdom of the world, he could have, we're told, he could bring down thousands upon thousands of age, but his kingdom's not like that. So he's trying to say to Pilate, I'm not a threat to you, in my opinion. I'm not a threat to the Roman Empire. Because my kingdom is not like that. So what does Jesus do? He heals this guy. So for me, as I said earlier, Jesus is trying to get Pilate to think. You are a king, then said Pilate. Now, when you think about that, you are a king. Now, was Pilate being facetious? Was he trying to wind Jesus up? Or did he really believe that he was a king? Because Jesus says, you are right in saying I am a king. In fact, for this reason I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone on the side of truth listens to me. Truth. Now, I wasn't going to do this, but I'll probably get told off with Brendan afterwards. But verse 38 says, what is truth? That's Pilate's thing. Now, I passionately believe that Jesus Christ is the truth. I actually believe that he's the absolute truth. Some of my friends, who are not fellow believers, reflect what I call postmodernism. And society, and Brenda was hinting at it, is they question truth. And I think Pilate. See, those questions. He wanted to know the truth. And when Jesus actually tells him that I am the truth, he couldn't, he couldn't accept it. So, what I want to do now is actually concentrate on if we believe that Jesus is not just the Son of God, but we sang about it, notice in a couple of songs we sang today refers to Jesus as the king well what does that mean to Michael Singleton when I say to people yes I believe Jesus is the son of God I believe he's the lord of lords I believe he's the king of kings I believe he's my king so what does that actually mean for me right first thing when I started to believe I think I told you this once before when I came here God spoke to me when I was 14 and told me I was going to be a teacher. A change in one's allegiance. And I was trying to think about that when I was 14. I can remember God speaking to me as I can remember him speaking to me when I was 58 to tell me to stop teaching. But it's my allegiance. So I want you to think about that if you really believe that Jesus is your king how loyal are you to him how do you honour him how do you serve him and then a change of one's expectations change of one's expectations so I actually started to go to a church of England church when I was 14 uh, my parents lived on Limbury Meath Estate does anybody live on Limbury Meath Estate no nope. oh you do oh okay you used to oh right <laughs> I thought I recognised you <laughs> yeah okay so, and I used to go to St Augustine's yeah and on this journey from 14 and I'm now there's this lady who goes about old age and thing. So I'm now 66 but expectations. I was a very big-headed, arrogant young man. 
I'm not now. <laughs> That's because I'm older. But, okay, but seriously, expectations. When I started to hear about the kingdom being taught, how did that affect me? Jesus is my king. I have to serve him. I'm in his kingdom. Now, we live in a time where the world is very, very difficult. But what's our expectation? I always, when I'm, when I'm in Luton, always go and get the daily paper. And there's a gentleman who I see sometimes. And he must be in his 50s. I've never, ever spoken to him until this morning. And he said to me, it's cold today, isn't it? I said, yes, it is. And I noticed he had a newspaper bag. And then, he, for some reason, he started to talk to me. Now, I was in a hurry, and I felt, do I just ignore this bloke you know, and keep walking as quickly as I can to get to the cop, to get the paper or not? I just felt prompted not to do that. And he started to tell me about his problems. And I thought, this man hasn't got any hope. <laughs> so sad that this guy hadn't got any hope. He'd obviously read the paper, and it looks as though England might go to, the United Kingdom might be going to war. And he started to talk about that. But it then reminded me about the kingdom of God. So I said to this guy, do you want me to pray for you? And he said, no. I said, that's fine. I said, but one thing you need is hope. And I left that with him. A change in one's values once we accept Jesus as our king. I don't know what your values were before you committed your life to Christ, but I was not very happy with mine. And I've just hinted at, I've been on this journey. When I stopped playing rugby, I started to play football on the Sunday morning. Uh, and it took a whole season for God to actually get through to me that I, he wanted me to stop. Uh, and I did stop. But when I was playing, I used to swear. And I thought, why am I doing this? You know, um, as I sort of hinted at in my, in my character. And then when I went through the waters of baptism, this was halfway through the season, my last season of playing, I felt God say to me, you will now stop swearing. And I did. Okay, so one's values. If you really want to look up values, read the Beatitudes. A change in one's priorities. A change in one's priorities. That was hard for me on my journey. Time, money. I want you to think about those two in particular. Uh, your priorities, time and money. A change in one's lifelong mission. Now I actually believe in the sovereignty of God. And as I've already told you, that when I was 14, God wanted to become a teacher. Right, now I'm going to skip loads now because um, somebody needs to know that I'm summarising Okay, so if you want to go and get the, the youth, um, I'm going to leave you with the six M's. Right. The six M's. Remember, we're in the kingdom. So what does that really mean? So to sum up, the six M's for me. Making good work, wherever you are. Making good work. Number two. Modelling godly character for me it's the fruit of the spirit love, joy, peace patience, kindness, goodness gentleness and self control and I'll put in my notes here they are all counter cultural I don't know about you but when I came towards them at the end of my teaching career and I had to you know, I was line, line managing loads of people um, I found it difficult. 
because the head teacher I was serving right at the end what? Okay. was for me <laughs> not living to, my, to the values that I want to represent Jesus by ministering grace and love third one wherever you be ministering grace and love the fourth one believe it or not although it's really difficult for you I know that molding the culture that you're in molding culture fifth M we are to be a mouthpiece for truth and justice a mouthpiece for truth and justice and the last one is that we are a messenger of the gospel and remember the gospel is good news so if I've overrun I'm sorry <laughs>